Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, George Mason University proudly brings to you its premier movie review program that's out of this world. I'm the Dean Machine, Roger Dean, with Mason Cable Network and Student Media, and this is From the Cinema. Hello, how are you? I'm glad to have you all here. Thank you for your constant support of From the Cinema. So, long story short, I have this lovely girlfriend named Savannah Campbell. She wanted me to watch this movie, and I have no problem watching movies. We all know that. She loves this movie. I watched it, and I obviously felt some type of way. So, I am reviewing this for her, for myself, and for you. Now, let's take a closer look at the movie they call The Notebook. I was unaware that this movie came out this millennium. I, for some odd reason, thought this movie was a 90s movie. Anyway, The Notebook is actually a 2004 American romantic drama film. I thought it was going to be a romantic comedy. Boy, was I wrong. There's nothing really funny about this movie. It is based on the 1996 novel of the same name by Nicholas Sparks. I knew this thing had something to do with the 90s. That must be why I thought that. Now, Mr. Sparks, who was born December 31st, 1965, is an American writer and novelist. He has published 18 novels and two nonfiction books. Several of his novels have become international bestsellers, and 10 of, ten of his romantic drama novels have been adapted to film with multi-million dollar box office grosses. However, none of the film adaptations have been critically well received. We will find out today, won't we? <laughs> I have never read any of his books, but I have seen one of his movies, A Walk to Remember. Book, October 1999, the movie came out in 2002. That movie is really super sad. Back to this film. It was directed by Nick Ca Cassave. In 1985, Cassave married his wife, Isabel. They had two daughters together, Virginia Sarah, who was born in 1986, and Sasha, who was born in 1988, before divorcing, later marrying Heather Queenie Walquist, who has appeared in several of his films, including a small role, actually, in The Notebook. She plays Sarah, a secondary character and best friend to the female lead, Allie Hamilton, portrayed by Rachel McAdams. The movie is effectively a family project, as Cassavet's own mother, Gina Rollins, appears as the older, married, Allie Hamilton Calhoun. He directed some other not-so-well-known movies, Unhook the Stars, 1996, She's So Lovey, 1997, John Q, 2002, and obviously The Notebook, and then there's Alpha Dog, 2006, where he was the writer and the director, My Sister's Keeper in 2009, and Yellow in 2012. Now this story is a traditional story of a boy and a girl who love each other. At a modern day nursing home, an elderly man named Duke, James Garner, begins to read a romantic story from his notebook to a fellow patient, Gina Rollins. The story he tells begins in the 1940s in Seabrook Island, South Carolina. I love that decade, so that's a good thing. Now I personally wouldn't have wanted to live in that decade, but I love to learn about it. There's the local country boy, Noah Calhoun, Ryan Gosling, is smitten with 17-year-old heiress Allie Hamilton, Rachel McAdams, after seeing her at a carnival, and they share an idyllic summer love affair. This story is like the complete epitome of what every young teenage all-American girl wanted in her love life. <laughs> now, I love the actors. They portray these roles so perfectly. They are your typical 1940s lovers. This movie stars Ryan Thomas Gosling, who was born November 12, 1980. Now, here's something I didn't know. He is a Canadian actor. <laughs> film director, screenwriter, musician, and a businessman. He began his career as a child star on the Disney Channel's Mickey Mouse Club in 1993 to 1995. He started acting before I was born. He was in slightly scary things like Are You Afraid of the Dark in 1995 and Goosebumps 1996. He starred in the television series Breaker High 1997 to 1998 as Sean Hanlon and Young Hercules in 1989 and 1990 as the title role. I personally think certain actors are better at TV and movies. I've never seen his TV roles. His first starring role was a Jewish neo-Nazi in The Believer, 2001, and he then built a reputation for starring in independent films such as Murder by Numbers, 2002, The Slaughter Rule, 2002, and The United States of Leland, 2003. The Notebook is the movie that brought him into the attention of the wider audience in 2004 with the leading role in the romantic drama. He won four Teen Choice Awards and an MTV Movie Award. He was nominated for an Academy Award for his performance as drug addicted teacher in Half Nelson 2006. His performance as a socially inept loner in Lars and the Real Girl 2007 was nominated for a Golden Globe Award. So that's some stuff about Ryan Gosling. 
Then there's Rachel Ann McAdams, who was born November 17th, 1978. She is a Canadian actress. Why is everyone Canadian? After graduating from a four-year theater program at York University in 2001, she initially worked in Canadian television and film production, such as the drama film Perfect Pie 2002, and the comedy film My Name is, T My Name is Tonino 2002, and the comedy miniseries Slings and Arrows. In 2002, she made her Hollywood film debut in the comedy The Hot Chick. McAdams found fame in 2004 appearing in the comedy classic Mean Girls and then the romantic drama The Notebook. Next is James Paul Marsden, who was, who was born September 18, 1973. He's an American actor, singer, and former Versace model. Let's go America. He would then gain prominence with his portrayal of Scott Summers, Scott Cyclops, in the X-Men film series. I love all the X-Men movies except X-Men 3 The Last Stand. They are all an allegory. He also starred in 2006 Superman's Returns. Following his breakthrough in comic book films, Marsden went on to star in various genre films including 2007's Hairspray, which was a critical and commercial success, and won many awards for its ensemble cast. As Corny Collins, he sang two songs for the film's soundtrack, which has been certified platinum by the RIAA. He would continue his success and star in family-friendly films such as Enchanted. Marsden then portrayed President John F. Kennedy in Lee Daniels' The Butler. I love this movie. It is one of my favorite movies. It is a great movie about race relations in the world. He also had a supporting role as an antagonist in Anchorman 2, The Legend Continues. Now, what did I think about this movie? It was a good movie. I can't talk much about the plot because it will give things away, um, but there are some important parts of the movie that need to be revealed. But the flaw I have with this movie is that all of these revelations are super predictable. It may be Nicholas Sparks' fault, it is his story, I just can't with the movies that are so predictable that people will think I've seen it before. I cannot stand that aspect. I love multiple parts of this movie that were sad, and I've seen movies that are sadder, but it has its moments. For me, the revelation the mother has with the daughter is a very sad part. The other part is the ending. Not the last final thing, but the portion where she comes back and then leaves again. That was very sad. I appreciate the existence of this movie as I do with most movies. <laughs> with all of them in this movie, The Notebook received mixed reviews, but performed well at the box office and received several award nominations, winning 18 Choice Awards, Satellite Award, and MTV Movie Award. The film became a sleeper hit and has gained a cult following. It had its good moments. The plot devices used were basic. When the war happened, you knew what was gonna happen. <laughs> These were very basic storytelling techniques and that kind of bothered me. But the actors did do well with what they had to work with. But other than that, the movie isn't as phenomenal as it's blown up to be, but it is a good movie with a good message. Now, the film premiered June 25th, 2004 in the United States and Canada and grossed 13.5 million in 2,303 theaters its opening weekend, ranking number four at the box office. It had a budget of 29 million, the film grossed a total of $115.6 million worldwide, $81 million in Canada and the United States, and $34.6 million in other countries. It is the 14th highest grossing romantic drama film of all time. Now, so here's a quote. I like it because it shows that true love never really ends and is worth fighting for. If two people are really meant to be together, then it'll work out in the end. That's my girlfriend, Savannah Campbell. Now, for me, The Notebook received a mixed reaction from critics. Based on 154 reviews on review aggregator Rotten Tomatoes, 52% of critics gave the film a positive review, with an average rating of 5.7 out of 10. At Metacritic, which assigns an average rating out of 100 to reviews, the film currently holds an average score of 53, based on 34 reviews, which indicates a mixed or average reviews. Now, that's not a whole lot of people, but I kind of agree with them. In June 2010, Entertainment Weekly included Ali and Noah in its list of 100 greatest characters of the last 20 years. The periodical listed The Notebook in their 25 sexiest movies ever. Us Weekly included the film in their list of 30 most romantic movies of all time. Boston.com ranked the film the third top romantic movie. The Notebook appeared on Movie Phone's list of 25 best romance movies of all times. And Mary Claire also put the film on its list of 12 most romantic movie scenes of all time. The scene where Noah climbs the Ferris wheel because he wants a date with Allie made the list of total films 50 most romantic movie moments of all time. 
The Kiss in the Rain was ranked number four in Total Film's 50 Best Movie Kisses list. That may be why every girl ever always wants to kiss somebody in the rain. So I blame you, Nicholas Sparks. Bottom line, one, watch this movie. Two, watch it with the significant other. Three, this movie is good. Four, it is sad. Five, it is not the saddest movie ever. Six, I love my girlfriend. Seven, she likes the movie, obviously. Eight, Gosling's band, Dead Man Bones, released their self-titled debut album and toured in North America in 2009. Nine, he is a supporter of PETA, Invisible Children, and the Enough Project, and has traveled to Chad, Uganda, and Eastern Congo to raise awareness about conflicts in the regions. <sighs> well, until next time, that's that. That's the lowdown of my rundown of The Notebook 2004. I thank you all for sticking around to the end of the video. As stated before, I won't give it a rating here, but I already have on my blog, which you can check out at rogersrundown.blogspot.com. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, feedback, or emotional outburst, feel free to reach out to me personally on my Twitter at DeanMachine2016 or on my blog, which is again rogersrundown.blogspot.com. That is all. Thank you, and until next time, do good things and make good choices.